Thanks, Lots of Gary, you do so good with this technology. Kudos to you. And you, you know, I've learned all of this. All of this. Like, you know, you, you, you're you so curious. Yeah, I, I work till I figure it out. <laughs> okay. And let me go to share screen. That one. Share. And that view. Go to okay, there we are. Okay. I guess we're ready to go. So, all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> well, good morning, ladies. Um, I'm I'm happy to see you all this morning. Uh, it's been a, a good week, a busy two weeks for me. I had a woman's retreat that was great. Um, I had a neighbor whose father passed away, and I was three days with them, taking care of things with them, and um, just various things, you, you know, throughout the last two weeks. But uh, it's been good, and I've been studying, preparing. So we're going to today uh, welcome you to uh, dream or visions, visions, dreams come out you know, from inside us and when we're sleeping. And the visions are things that we will often see when we're awake or at least in the daytime. And uh, what what is a vision? It, it's the act of the power of seeing. It's our sight. It's, it's what are we seeing, but seeing not necessarily only with our eyes, but seeing with our spirit and with our feelings. It's a thought, an idea, a concept, uh, something that's made by our imagination. And our imaginations are big and full. Um, it's, it's the visual discernment uh, or seeing something before it happens. <clears throat> and they often uh, appear um, when you're awake. Um, not, not necessarily when you're asleep. Now, when I sleep, I don't dream. Well, I say I don't dream very often. They say that every person dreams, but you don't always remember it. And I I don't usually remember dreaming just just a few few times. Uh, can, can you mute, mute there? Somebody's okay. Um, so then... Um, but I do have many times that I have an idea, a thought, or often I'll wake up and have a thought and not really understanding that it came from what I was dreaming. But I will more often in, in the daytime hours have a thought, something will just pop up. I'll see, I'll actually see something or think something that I see it. And those are what we call the visions then. They can be used by God and they can be used by Satan. So again, we must be careful when we see something, whether in a dream or in a vision, is it from God? Is it from Satan? So when it's God, he will give us information that maybe we don't see it in the scriptures uh, or maybe a person doesn't even have a Bible. I, he I hear of people in other places that, that don't have a Bible, yet they will have a vision. They will see something to know something about God. And um, so if they don't have a Bible or don't see it in the Bible, 
God will show it. Often when he's calling people to do things or show them what will happen in the future, I used to have, and this may sound crazy to y'all too, but um, for years, and I've been around many years and many different cars, but I always have a feeling and know when something was going to happen with my car, whether I, I didn't, ne didn't know necessarily if it was going to be an accident or a breakdown, but I always felt and knew that feeling would always pop up and then after it was just always soon something would happen with my car so I, I learned to know what that feeling meant that was my car something was going to happen and now I also have, I have a, the same kind of thing with with death God has given me an understanding of the spirit of of death that I I know when Someone, someone is going to die. Not necessarily a, a particular person, but that if it was a time of death for someone somewhere. Now, Satan, he uses our dreams and visions to deceive us. He tries to trick us. The same way he tricked Eve in, in the garden, he tries to trick us. Uh, especially if we have uh, the, the drugs included. He uses drugs a lot to get to people. Um, now, visions, can they can be real. They can be things that are happening or will happen, or they can be really false, meaning that we dream something or have a vision, uh, have a, the vision of something, that is not real, but we will feel it's real and it'll make us be afraid of something. Also, um, many different religions that are not from our Bible or our God are formed and made by people who they've had a, a dream or a vision of some kind. Uh, Buddhism, um, Islam, just there's just various ones. And um, they began by one person having a vision. And so that then they take it and develop a religion. They can be lies. They can be telling you, uh, maybe you have a dream that you're sick. Or, I mean, a vision that you're sick. You think, oh, I've been around those people. I'm going to get the coronavirus. I can't help but get it. I, 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 you know, or or you have this vision. You see yourself as sick. <clears throat> That's a lie. Um, sometimes it's just uh, a, a false waking up. You know, we think, oh, well, that happened to me. Oh, you know, or um, the again the drugs. <clears throat> that cause us to have these visions that are not real. So some are real, some are false. So we have this warning in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. It says, but the Spirit says that in later times, some will fall away from faith and pay attention to deceitful spirits and demonic doctrines so the bible warns us to be careful to search for the real ones not the false ones and satan he he changes himself into an angel he makes you think he's good just the same way he did eve in the garden he deceives us he changes himself and in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, it tells us that Satan changes himself to look like an angel, not to become an angel, but to look like an angel. So we've got to be careful. <clears throat> so the devil is smart, clever, crafty. He uses things to, to grasp a hold of us, and he's still trying to trick us the same way he did Eve. So be, let, take the warning, 
and watch for it. Don't let Satan transform himself into something wonderful in, in your life. <clears throat> the devil also, he has he has many titles, names. And, and the first one in that second Corinthians was that angel of light. And then, you know, he's a, a mimic. He also likes to do things like the Bible or like God does. And we hear, you know, God says uh, sometimes he's a, a roaring lion. Well, okay, in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, Satan says himself, he's like a roaring lion seeking. You know, he's the prince of the power of the air. We know that Jesus will come back and be king. And Satan it, it declares himself as prince. He's the power of darkness, the prince of this world. He's that great dragon. So there's many things that that Satan has names and shows up as. Now, we know that God has many names also and as many things for us. But we need to be careful about falling for some of these satanic names and things that he does okay so <clears throat> today prophets uh in the old testament we learn of the prophets and in the new testament there are some people that say well we don't have prophets today but i can't find proof of that in in the scriptures to me the bible tells us that they, that we will have prophets but uh, in today, prophets are falsely deceived themselves by uh, their their own minds. They 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 begin to think of my mind. I'm so smart. I can see what's happening in you, or no, you know. They take it on themselves rather than giving glory to God. So uh, even uh, with with prophets, we need to be careful who you're listening to whose dreams and visions you allow to come into your life and to talk about you uh, in, in a vision. So there's false prophets. Jeremiah 14, verse 14 says that the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. So, um, he he didn't send those people and he doesn't uh command them he he doesn't talk to them so they what they prophesy to you is false visions and they can have false visions but they don't acknowledge that they're not from god okay so it's the deceit of their heart so be careful again who you listen to um, and then in Jeremiah 23, verse 16, he says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, because they make you vain. And when you're vain, you want all eyes looking at you. Okay. So um, if they give you a prophecy that makes you think, oh, all people are going to be looking at me, they're going to, mm hmm then that's not a true prophet uh, vision from God because God will not do things. He will raise you up and give you titles and names, but it's not for your glory. It's for his glory. Okay. So Jeremiah was warning of the false prophets. Um, and then John uh, in the New Testament in first first John four verse one through three, he says, "Don't believe every spirit, but test those spirits, because false prophets have gone out into the world, but you know the spirit of God. so how how do we know the spirit of God? That's why we need to have time with God in the Bible. Listen to good preaching and teaching. Study yourself, because if you don't know, then you won't see and understand which are right and which are wrong. Okay. 
So know those spirits and that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh as God and that every spirit does not confess that Jesus is come. Um, so it's the spirit of the Antichrist. And uh, you've heard about his coming. We've studied about that. We know that, that, that that anti, the one that's actually against Christ, will come and make you think that he's wonderful. He'll be a false prophet. All right. Now, how, we must, it says, test the spirits, whether they are from God. And uh, so we need to search for ourselves and un understand if you are saved inside, your spirit will, will know and recognize the right ones. And then it says, we have been given the spirit of truth. In other words, the spirit that's in us is true. And so it will know truth when it comes to it. And we are promised wisdom. Do you know that? that you are promised wisdom, but we don't all have or practice wisdom. Why? Because you don't ask for it. The Bible tells us we are promised wisdom when we ask for it. So must we, in communication with God, we must ask for the wisdom to know the right visions, the right prophets. Okay. Whoops. So, what is the purpose for a vision? Why? They tell us future things, and they prophesy. They show us things that will happen and things to come. And we see that in many of them that are in the scriptures. Uh, they teach us spiritual truth. Sometimes we're wondering, hmm, is that right or wrong? Or is, uh, oh, okay, that's right in the spirit. So they teach that spiritual truth. <clears throat> they strengthen the believer because sometimes if if you a prophet gives you a word and you uh, have <clears throat> had a thought in your own mind or an imagination, and then a prophet comes with that same vision and tells you, oh, that establishes faith in you and then in, in, encourages you because it strengthens your belief that you truly heard from God yourself. <clears throat> also, it shows different things that will happen, um, happen in, in the future. And there were many in the Bible that were that way. <clears throat> For instance, uh, Revelation is all a vision uh, about what it will happen, what events will happen. All through uh, the uh the prophets in the Old Testament and the New Testament, they're telling things that will happen. They show us God's majesty, God's in, God's control, that, that God knows all. <clears throat> and <clears throat> it also shows that punishment for sin must happen. Uh, for every every person, but for us who are believers, we know that ours has already been been paid for. It's finished. Punishment has been been taken on the cross in Jesus, and it shows God's majesty, confirms the punishment, and then it informs, gives you gives you information of what to do for God's will. For instance, just a few weeks ago, I had, and an, uh, I don't know if I call them visions or um, just impressions, what, but I knew that I needed to go to Asbury, okay? I just woke up and I knew, go. You know, I just knew it. So that was a vision that God gave me. He informed me of his will for me. His will, his desire was for me to go. And he gives us encourage, encouragement and hope through uh, visions also. So there's, there's many things that God will give us 
and reasons to give us visions. <clears throat> he will uh, give us a blessing or a promise, something that, that uh, we know will happen in the future, something maybe we desire. God says, this will happen. This is the vision. This is the vision. This will be a blessing for you. It's a promise to you. <clears throat> and it shows us his, the father's plan for us. You know, the Bible tells us plainly. Um, there's 86 times in the Old Testament <clears throat> that they wrote about the visions and 17 times in the New Testament that they showed a vision of some sort. Now, do you know that if you do the false prophesying or lie about the vision, do you know what happens to you? According to the Bible, God would get upset if you lie or told a false vision and you would die. Okay, so in Deuteronomy 13, verse 1, says, If there rise up among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives you signs and wonders. Now, when we talk about signs and wonders, that often includes your healing, your casting out of demons, um, Raising from the from the dead, those various things, those are what we call signs and wonders. So then in in verse two, it says, and the sign or wonder happens, it comes to pass that he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known. Now, if he encourages you to search after things other than the true God, those small gods, which you have not known. Then in verse three, he says, you will not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord, your God, will prove you. And then in verse uh Five, it says, and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Okay, because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord. So anytime that someone gives you a vision, a dream, whatever, and it turns you away from the Lord, then you know that God hates that. He doesn't like that. And God says in that Old Testament, if they tell you those false things, they should be killed. Okay, and then in Jeremiah 23, uh, 16, it says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds and not from the mouth of the Lord. Okay. Uh, so Jeremiah was upset with them there. And in 23 through uh, verse, verse 27 says, they think the dreams that they tell one another will make my people forget my name. So, in other words, their whole purpose is trying to get you to forget the name of God. Just the same as their fathers, their fathers forgot his name through Baal worship. And we see that today. We see many that are doing satanic worship and things, and they're proud of it. And they're trying to tell you and encourage you. Those are false uh, people. And we are not to listen to them. And then in verse 32, he says, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, declares the Lord. 
They tell them and lead my people astray with their lies, reckless lies. Yet I did not send or appoint them. They do not uh, benefit these people at all, declares the Lord. So in this chapter 23 in Jeremiah, he's telling me because they had had some false prophets come into their land and they were they were actually worshiping Baal, which is a, a, a Satan worship. And so they were trying to get the, the people of God to turn to worship their God. So um, in Galatians 1 verse 8, it says, let God's curse fall on anyone, including angels from heaven who preach different kind of good news. Now, who would be an angel from heaven that tries to give you false teaching? Remember, Satan himself and his angels were thrown out of heaven. So uh, you would maybe see an angel. You have a vision of an angel and you think, oh, I saw an angel. But remember, Satan can appear as an angel of light. So the big thing here is to just be careful if you're listening to prophets. And there are good prophets out there. I know some. I've been studying some. But you got to be careful that they continue in the word of God, the truth of the word, and the truth about our true God. So who in the Bible had visions? Many, many, many. This is, I don't think all, but it's some. There was uh, Eliphaz. He was a, f a friend of Job. And, and he had a vision and he told Job. There was Abraham in Genesis, Jacob in Genesis. You know, we hear, remember the ladder, Jacob's ladder? That was a vision. Bal uh, Balaam, the false prophet, he himself had a vision. So you don't need to be a Christian or uh, born again to have dreams and visions. All people can have them from all sorts of gods, okay? All right. And then Micaiah in Kings, Samuel, uh, who was a prophet, they all had visions. Nathan, he was a prophet, and he was told, he was told about King David's throne that would be established forever before it ever happened he prophesied he he had the vision and he prophesied it and then uh he also prophesied about david's son solomon would build the temple for god and he he saw it in a vision and told it and prophesied of it so there's many many times in the bible where different people had visions of things, especially future things that would happen. Ezekiel, uh, and uh, he he was shown God's glory and his throne. So he, he was able to see basically into heaven and he saw the glory and the throne of God in heaven. Um, he was shown that. He was informed of all the, the abominations at the temple in Jerusalem. So we see that he saw things. He was informed of things. And then in the third one, he was taken. He was moved uh, into Israel's elders in Babylonian captivity. In other words, he was, uh, I don't know, transported, <laughs> uh, moved, taken to the other the other place there so uh, various things that happen in visions uh, was it a dream was it a vision was i here just thinking it or did was i actually moved there 
Uh, and e Ezekiel, he saw that valley of dry bones. Um, that was a vision that he had. So he saw, and he also witnessed God at the temple calling for the people to repent. Sorry, repent. Okay. So many, many different ways uh, in the Old Testament there. Daniel, um, we know that the stories of Daniel, he was shown those four world uh, empires before they ever started. Uh, the ancient, what we call the ancient of days on the throne. He saw God on the throne. Um, he um, had a vision about... Uh, the, the ram and the, the goat, the, the ram and the goat, he had that vision. Uh, he saw things that would happen in the end times, you know, because Daniel wrote in the Old Testament about many of the things that John wrote about in Revelation. They had the visions, the visions of what will happen. Isaiah he told of many future things. He was a, a, a great prophet, told things. Many of the Old Testament, what we call the minor prophets, and we did a study on uh, Habakkuk um, a few weeks ago, and we saw how our world today could be written into that book. Um, but all of these, they're called minor prophets because they only have small writings, stories uh, in the Bible, but they were all prophetic. They were writing what God showed them in visions. So that's, those are all visions. Now, in the New Testament, Peter, James, and John, they saw what we call the transfiguration of Jesus. That was uh, when Jesus was changed and they, they, they saw it and witnessed it. It was a vision for them. And then they also saw as Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus. And it was a vision for these three disciples. Stephen, um, he was killed for Christ. Um, he was a martyr. But he also saw God's throne with Jesus standing to the right of the throne. So he had that vision before they killed him. Ananias was the name of the man that um, Jesus told him to go visit Saul and heal him. So in a vision, Jesus told this man to go to Saul and heal him. And if you remember, Saul was killing all the Christians. And this man, Ananias, he was a Christian, and he thought, if I go there, you know, what if he kills me, tries to kill me? He says, well, but Jesus told me go in this vision, so I better go. And he went, and he was the one that after Saul met Jesus on that roadway and became blind, they also told Saul to go and that this man would come and heal him. So, you know, he was just following what God said, no matter what it might mean for him. Daniel was that way too. Uh, Cornelius, he was a Roman centurion, and he was told to ask Peter to come and baptize him. He had this vision that said, go find Peter to come and baptize you. Peter, 
he was shown a, a sheet that was laid out with the, the not the unclean animals on it. It was a vision that he saw. He saw this sheep with these animals on it. Now, does that sound like, that's a crazy dream, right? But he was awake. He saw it. But then we saw what, what it meant as we continue to read about these. Okay. The Apostle John, of course, he had many things were shown, revealed to him. All of Revelation was a vision that John had and wrote about. And then Paul himself had several. Uh, he saw the man Ananias, who, who baptized him and healed him. And then after that, uh, it says in Galatians that he, he went to Arabia and he was taught the gospel by Christ himself. So this was after Christ's ascension into heaven. But he said he sent and he went there and he said he was taught by Christ himself about Christ. That was his vision. And then he saw several things in his mind uh, concerning the man from Macedonia. Uh, and then he was told to speak to um, in, in Corinth and to inform them to leave Jerusalem. Okay, so these are many, 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 many examples in the Bible of things that they saw. They 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 could have stopped and thought, oh, crazy. I need help. But instead, they followed on. Paul also, um, he blessed to see in his mind's eye what they call, you, you, you've heard that term, your mind's eye. In other words, that. Our, our mind is seeing things, okay? That he, but he saw the third heaven where God's throne is. So we, we've seen examples of people seeing God's throne. So that means that they were seen in heaven. Does that mean they were taken there and then brought back? But they saw it. The vision was clear. Jesus. Jesus was here as a person, right? And they say that every person dreams and can have visions. So did Jesus dream just the same as we do? Have visions? It says here in Luke 9 verse 22, it says, The Son of Man must suffer many terrible things. Now this is Jesus writing this. And this is before before it happened, he said he will be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He will be killed, but on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. This is Jesus telling the disciples this vision that as a person, remember, he was God and man. So as a man, he was seeing this vision of what will happen, what's coming in the future. And we were about to celebrate this, this next uh, week as we're in the Easter season now, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Last week, Sunday, I helped with baptism we baptized over 40 people um, and we said that we were buried in the likeness of christ's death and then raised to newness of life in christ and so that's what jesus was telling here before it happened god does is god a visionary Think about it. As he created this world and he envisioned it all in his mind before it ever happened. Envision. And then what about you? He is the greatest visionary 
because he dreamed of you. He says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, to prosper, not harm you, to give you hope in the future. So God was having them write this. This was his vision for you. So we see that Jesus had visions. God is a great visionary. So when we have a vision, we have something to, to, to look forward to and to understand that our troubles have a purpose. God didn't send those troubles, but God used them for his purpose. We have a, a changed perception as we start to see things Look at things the way God looks at things. How does God see things? And in the Old Testament, think important. Excuse me. They always thought that dreams, visions were so important. They said if we don't have visions, then something is wrong. So why are they not having visions? Why today are even in many churches telling us that's not for today? We don't, we, we don't need those visions today. That's wrong. Because when the visions are gone, it means things are not right with the people. Whoops. <clears throat> Because young men, okay, the young man that Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. So they're saying Samuel, he was young. Uh, I don't know, they say maybe he was 10, 12 when he had that, when he heard his, his name being called. You know, and then finally he knew it was God calling him. Okay, so he was teaching Eli and helping Eli. And uh, it was, you know, uh, many people in that day had kind of just fallen away, away from all the teachings. So they weren't having a lot of visions in that day. And we know this verse in Proverbs where vision is gone, where there's no vision, the people will perish. But if you keep the law, happy is he. In other words, we're, we're into, into the book. We're studying, reading, studying, knowing, hearing from God. And the more that we get, the closer we get to God, the more we hear him. And he tells us that he says, my sheep hear my voice. So if we want to hear God speak to us and see those visions, we need to stay close to God. In Habakkuk, it says, and the Lord answered me and he said, write the vision, make it plain so he who reads it you know will understand it it says for the vision waits its appointed time it hurries to the end and will not lie so here what he's saying is the vision has has a right time <clears throat> that it will happen in isaiah in daniel they were writing about future things. Some have still not happened, but they're waiting for the right time. And it will not lie. Maybe it seems slow, but here's that word again. Wait for it. Wait for it. Because you think, oh, it's never going to happen. Oh, yes. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It won't wait. When the right time is here, it will come. 
So just hold on to whatever visions and dreams that God gives us. And I, I like this quote by Jan Greenwood. She says, when God gives us a vision, he gives us the provision. Whatever we need for that vision, God will also give us whatever we need for it to happen. So we walk by faith, not by sight. So we may have a vision and it's not what we're seeing. I, I, I never see that happen. It's not happening, not happening. No, walk by our faith, not by what we see in our physical realm. Receive the dreams, receive the visions and then walk by faith that it will happen in God's right time for all. So what's your vision like this morning? Is it 2020? And when remember when there's no vision, the people perish? Do we have good vision this, this morning? And are we seeing things right? And in Acts 26, verse 19 says, uh, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision and that's the important thing if god tells you something just do it obey it that's like what when god told me go to asbury i've had many go visions when i went to jamaica to become a missionary and work with the deaf that was a go when i um, moved to maryland when I walked into my daughter's house as I was walking walking up the steps the first time, I heard it and it was that impression, your home. I knew from that moment that I needed to be here. And I've had many, many times, matter of fact, I'm writing my book, you said what? about all the things in various ways that God has shown me through life, what to do, where to go, what to expect, hope, promises, all of that. So obey. So vision, what's your vision? Do you have visions? Do you have dreams? And are you open to receive? So if you want more, he told us, remember, ask for the wisdom and ask him to give us dreams because you know that um as I, I said before we sleep about a third of our life they say 20 to 25 years of our life is sleeping and about a third of that is dreaming and that's god's quiet time to speak to us then when we're awake the other two-thirds He's giving us these visions and these insights and understanding of things. But we must be ready to receive. Let your light bulbs come on and see the visions that God has for you. So that is your vision. Um, let's see here. Let me... Thank you.